That's a lot. Remember when Arias played and lost in the finals here last year against Higueras, I saw him in the hotel uh, later and he said he did get tired and he said, I just don't work hard enough and train hard enough. I think he's done that a little better this year. He'd have to to get this far. Advantage Gomez. Gomez holds his serve and wins the first game of the final set. That makes it love. 15 love. Good touch on that drop volley. He played a little closer than he had to, but pulled it off. Tony, I think that's what he has to do, Arias, uh, now in this match. If he wants to win, he's going to have to go on the attack a lot more and take more of the initiative. I know that was his game plan when he started out the match. He, he did it well in the first set, but he got off the track in the second set. Arias gets so far behind the baseline when he's 15, in a defensive 30. situation. You see where he is right there to come up and get this drop follow the hit deep in the court just inside the service line. He couldn't get there. Of course, the reason he was so deep was because Gomez had pushed him back there. But look where he was to play that last back end. He didn't have to be that far back then. And that one. You mentioned it in the first set that Gomez is playing more or less around the baseline and Arias about six foot mm -hmm. behind and if Arias wants to move the, the big fella around he's going to have to play in closer because he's giving Gomez too much time when he stands back that far. But on the, on the back end particularly he wants the ball down lower. shot wasn't as simple as he made it look either 30 40 still break point Gomez has been in the net 22 times Arias has only been in there four Shot. Two right. winners to save the uh, consecutive break points. Just watching Two's. him hit that forehand, he jumps all the way off the ground and spins all the way around. He throws that body into it, yeah. and I think that's the one thing that saves his arm. That whiplash motion. Again, Gomez looking to hit a forehand. Now he slides back a little bit. Advantage, Arias. Well, Gomez got what he wanted and just barely missed it wide. things that is starting to show as a telling point in this match is that Arias is hardly winning any free points on, on his serve. He's not being able to force any errors with his serve, whereas Gomez is doing that quite a lot. Yeah, early in the match, Arias won a couple of service games that love the first two times he served. Gomez did it twice at the end of the second set. Advantage, Gomez. So 
So where is having to fight for all his points when he's serving. shot under pressure well three break points and three winners the approach shot was too Deuce. short and it gave her plenty of time to move in on it but he really lashed it didn't he yeah you got to hand it to him to be able to hit the winner on break point down but it wasn't a good approach shot way too short on the move. Oh. Super point. Great point. Well, that really was some rally that Gomez coming in with the drop shot here. He really played a smart shot. It was the right time to play it. And good position. You'll notice how he Advantage moved into Gomez. the net after he played the drop shot, ready to cut off the down the line or the angle. And he just held that volley until Arias moved. Seconds. He could hit it any way he wanted to. He didn't make a big swing, just sort of blocked it. When he saw Arias coming across, he just went in behind him. Arias facing his fourth break point in this game. Number 13 off the forehand for Arias. Could be a big game for Arias, this one, Tony, if he can get out of it. Four break points, four winners, and if you get out of the game in the end, it's got to give you a big burst of confidence. Oh. On the other hand, if you don't get out of it, it's got to take shock, a lot out of you. Take yeah. a lot out of you. Cheaper points in this game for Arias. Short rally. Advantage Arias. Gomez definitely doesn't hurt you as much off the forehand when he pulls it cross court because he has more spin on it and doesn't have the pace. When he must like to hit it into the Arias forehand, it's when he nails it. Good deep approach. You know, one of the reasons that Arias may be having a tougher time winning points on his serve is velocity because it's dropped. We had it earlier. At approximately 102. And the last one he hit was clocked at approximately 76. That one was 99. That's what I Advantage area. Well, he he's only 5'9". He's not not a very big guy. He tries to use his surf by changing the pace up. There is the gun that gives us those figures. game of the match. Put him on the wrong foot again. Now, watching Gomez move across the court. And he had plenty of time to get back there, but he's such a big guy, six foot five, game 190 area. pounds, when he tries to turn around like ball. that, Tony, can't do it. Right. Also, as this type of a tennis court, it's a composition court, dries out. They hose it down. It's moist when you start. And as it dries out, it gets more slippery. So it's tough footing, particularly for a bigger guy. New balls, gentlemen tougher to stop and start again get back in the other direction right that foot slides by the time it stops you get your footing it's too late Gomez serve with new balls Love it, Dean. well quite often in tennis matches those long games are the ones that turn around matches and Gomez was on, right on top in this match at that stage oh. and he could be disappointed and play a loose game right here if he's not careful Oh, 
Also, Arias on a little bit of a high, having got out of the last game. Love 30. Faced four break points, hit four winners. Crowd gave him a big cheer after he held serve. <laughs> Tony, why do you think Arias, he's got a, an excellent forehand, but when Gomez serves to his 30. forehand, he blocks the ball back all the time and it gets him on the defensive. Well, he takes such a big swing at it. When Gomez hits it with power, he just doesn't have time to take that big swing. Arias just barely got his racket 30 on it. All. Came out of his hand as he made contact. That's the thing when you have that big looping backswing. That's what you try to do is rush the guy. Of course, so, it's more difficult to rush him on clay. So it's a smart play of Gomez to be serving to his forehand. He, he, on the fast serve. I think that's true, and he, he also likes to serve that way, obviously. Oh. You, don't, you don't get ranked in the top 20 in the world and be too dumb at this game. Gee, that 40, serve must have just caught the, uh, it did. the back of the line. Arias took a peek at the mark afterwards and realized it did hit it. to Gomez. He leads two games to one in the final Gomez set. Leads by two games to one. I won Wimbledon with this standard size head racket. It's a classic. But I'd be crazy to use it today because of this, the mid-sized head edge. Its hitting area is just a touch larger. But it's amazing how much more power you get. And it's designed to give more control than most of those round jumbos. Now there's a reason to switch to midsize. The Edge Series, because while there's still a place for your standard size racket, it's not out here. Pat Summerall with John Newcomb and Tony Traber, U.S. Clay Court Championships, the final between Jimmy Arias and Andres Gomez. Seats, please. Gomez leads 2-1, final set. Tony, uh, Jimmy Arias did a lot of work in the last two games. We're going to find you. out how fit he is, I think, right now. Well, and, uh, we keep mentioning that heat and humidity. 15, love. Gomez uh, came back to the end of the court at the court change and handed the ball boy a towel plus a cup with water or some kind of liquid in it. First time he's taken anything to drink back to the end of the court with him, so he's obviously feeling it. Starting to come to the net more and more now in this in this third set, Fifteen taking the offensive, all. and he's being he's able to do that because a lot of Arias' shots, although he's hitting some of them hard, they're landing short. Here he comes. If you're starting to get tired, it's easier to go forward this turn at baseline and get jerked around side to side. So. It's worked so far for Gomez. He's gone in 17, or gone in 28 times and won 17 of them. Hey! 15, 40. On the other hand, Arias, when he gets a short ball, he likes to drive it, but then he's just not following it into the net. I think he's been to the net, what, about six times? Four or five time? times, yeah. yeah. Not much at all, I know that. And he's been forced in some of that time on the drop shot. Right. And he's had chances to come in, too, off the short balls. Well, let's face it, that's not his game plan. It's not his bag. Double break point here and a tough second serve. Oh. Double fall. Game, Gomez. That's the third by Arias, and a terrible time for it. I Gomez leads by three. I think it answered a question for us at the last change of ends. I noticed Arias, when he changed ends, he poured two glasses of ice water over his head and uh, pulled his chair up underneath the umpire's uh, chair so he could get some shade. That's shirt number two for Gomez. You can see it is soaking wet. 
One of the reasons the players change their shirts, other than the weight, the extra weight holding that, that moisture, is it binds your shoulder when you serve. It just won't slide like it normally will. Love 15. Gomez has broken another string. That's the second time he's had to change rackets. Psychologically, Nuke, do you think that does anything to him? No, he's actually he didn't break the string. Oh, he's right. gone for sawdust. Right. He's uh, losing his grip. Not his grip on himself. <laughs> his grip on the racket. <laughs> Love. Correction, 15 all. 15 all. That's the second ace by Gomez. We thought we would see a few more from him. Because well, oh. he hits it so hard. to get into this game here. Look how much ground Gomez 15, had to 30. cover to run for this volley. All the way across court in a dead sprint. It's got to take a little bit out of you. That's the eighth time that Jimmy Arias has gotten to the net. He's won six of them. Yeah. He's got it. Yeah. Oh, what a shot. Gogo -Go looks at him and says, well, I don't believe it myself. You know it's not, not done on purpose, this drop volley. Here he goes. He has ball. to slide to the center of the court. Now he dies for it, both feet off the ground. The ball goes cross court, very sharply angled with a lot of backspin on it for a winner. We come back live at the 30. Oh, boy, that was a big point. Serving with a service break at 3-1, 30 all. Ball. And again, this is a final set, no tiebreaker. head no his foot well like 30 or 40 I just can't understand or Arias won that point but I can't understand why he's not taking the advantage of coming to the net because some of those shots of Gomez landed so short not his instinct Nook. he's not a net rusher I think if he wants to improve his game though Tony come up another notch another level he's going to have to take advantage of those shots and move to the net one thing we, we can all remember he's not yet 19 he's gonna be 19 on the 16th of this month yes That's a youngster, though. We've seen him for a few years. You get the feeling that they've been around more than they really have. One of the few times that Gomez has served and gone into the net, paid off. A real big point for Arias here. Still, Tony, when he's not, Arias. Arias has come to the net eight times and he's won six of those points. You have to ask the question, why doesn't he come in more? Yeah. Good defensive lob pays off for Arias. He gets his service break back. CBS Sports coverage of the 1983 U.S. Clay Court Championships will continue after this word from your local station. Game, Arias. Gomez leads by... Seating message furnished by the United States Tennis Association. Love 15. Arias serving at 2-3 in the final set. The score is Love 15.
Both players averaging 55% in their first serves. Balls. That's a low average, Tony. A reminder that CBS Sports next Sunday will feature the Pan American Games from Caracas, Venezuela, the opening ceremonies, and a preview of the athletes who've starred in games past. Next Sunday, 3.30 Eastern Time on CBS. 30-15. Pat, I want to take a moment to congratulate Emily Foster, who is the women's tennis coach at Trinity University. She was awarded the Wilson Intercollegiate Coach of the Year Award. They used to do that award at the U.S. Open. Done it this year at the clay courts. That's a nice honor. Indeed it is. some careless errors by both players in this game and again it can be fatigue setting in see Arias ready to go he wants to really play a fast type of game when he's serving he doesn't like to stall around <laughs> that was the beeper wasn't it yes it was and the ball wasn't even served. <laughs> that's it's got to shake you up a little bit there is the electronic device used to indicate when the serves go out you hear a beep <laughs> Toss it up. He didn't like the toss. Knew it was going to be a fault, I guess. Fault. And it's a double fault. 30, 40. That's his fourth. Break point. And Gomez wiping his hand again. Do you think, Tony, that he might uh, know that Arias likes to play quickly and that might be a, almost a little bit of a deliberate stall? I wouldn't be surprised at all. It's within the rules. Advantage areas. Well, they're both good fighters. Oh. Super effort from Arias to get back into the match because uh, trailing 3-1, Gomez was really pumped up. And he's fought his way back. Well, and having gotten a service break, listen to the crowd roar. Boy, Nuke, I'm sure you remembered. I remember Game when Arias. you were playing a tough match and the crowd Three gets behind you like that and shows Quite their late. appreciation. It really pumps you up. Airplanes in Indianapolis, too. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that earlier, but I didn't want to say it. Number eight. Love 15. Crowd solidly behind Arias on this stage. sure many of them remember the final between Arias and Tagaris last year and he captured many of them then uh, he's having a lot of trouble with his racket I don't think he broke a string then I just don't think he liked the tension in it five please thank you love 30 and that's 13 errors off the forehand well, Gomez getting a bit of strife here Gee, that's a tough serve. Just pulls you way off court. He hasn't used it a lot either. All. I think that's probably why he hasn't served more aces. He doesn't mix up the serves a lot. He does serves pretty much to a pattern. It's a let. Mm-hmm. 
sun's gone behind the clouds. A lot of us thankful for that. <laughs> Awfully good save by Arias to get him to break point. Well, and we saw earlier when Gomez got a little tired, Tony, he started missing those 30, forehands, 40. and he's missed two easy ones in this game. That's not his favorite, pulling it that way either, so he's in trouble right now. Now, does he drive this second serve? He's already served eight double faults. deep second serve he just goes for it doesn't he I guess when you're that big there's only one way to go <laughs> for it that's the thing he can't be a finesse player he just doesn't move well enough he's got overpower if he can oh! must be why they call him go go <laughs> nine double faults advantage areas I think that's two in this game isn't it mm -hmm. and two uh, Two easy forehands he's missed and two double faults. Could be a sign of fatigue. Oh. Gomez is lucky that one was out because he wouldn't have handled that return. Game, Arias. And Gomez pounds himself in the head with his racket. Arias wins the game and leads 4-3 in the final set. Darius serving, leading 4-3 in the final set. They've been out there an hour and 45 minutes now. Love 15. to have a look at that one. 15 all. Quiet play. Well, he did it nicely. He didn't he didn't Thank like you. the call. He up, took a look, didn't say anything. Aries went up and circled the mark or a mark. <laughs> <laughs> First service. Wait, please. Wow, that one missed by uh, seven foot. Or seen thirty. That's a shot he likes to hit. is down double break 15, point 40 having just secured the break and gotten up 4-3 and doing the same thing that Gomez did in the last game making mistakes off his strength his forehand two in a row and Gomez went to the towel to slow areas down Gomez standing way over once hit the forehand Might be a good idea that most of us don't speak Spanish. <laughs> good, sir. Not an ace, but just as good. That's his eighth service winner. Ace. Trying to serve his way out of it. Good second serve. Nice and deep right in the corner. So Gomez trying to run around it. He missed really, it badly. It really forced him into the era, though, because, because of the depth.
Jimmy Arias wisely back off of that low lob. Gomez once again doing a lot of court coverage. Three times he ran across the game, back of the court. Arias. That's Arias not a good, uh, five games to three. Final set. Good final point for him to finish on, serving to save the set after that long rally. 15 love. Gomez is saying, where have you been for a serve? <laughs> 40 love. Now, this is a place for Arias to perhaps save a little bit. Don't be chasing any ball on this particular point. Go for a winner if you want. Game, Gomez. He went for it, just as you said. He didn't get it. Game to Gomez. And Arias leads 5-4 now in the final set. Fifteen love. It's 15 love, and that's the situation. Jimmy Arias serving at 5-4 in the final set. He's served about 102 or three times now. You talk about pitchers and how many times they throw a baseball before they start getting tired. Oh. Arias just missed. It's 15 all now. 15 all. Of course, these guys have done a little more running than the baseball pitcher normally does. Oh, well, Gomez twice started to come to the net behind a chipped backhand. 30, I don't think he hit it exactly how he wanted to. Not enough depth, and he moved back to the baseline again. He's trying to get to the net. Ball. Force the pace. <coughs> oh, good shot. A while ago, Tony, both these guys are real fighters. And are also, we talked at the top of the show ball. about heavy hitting artillery, a lot of topspin shots. And both players have just been nailing that ball on both sides. So both obviously in very good physical shape. And they're playing for a U.S. national title. That's, that's a biggie. And $51,000. It's a pity to make a mistake like that. Give your opponent match point. 40, 30. Jimmy Arias, the 1983 U.S. Clay Courts champion, $51,000 richer. The scores, 6-4, 2-6, Tough match, Nuke. I thought it was an excellent match. It swung around all the time, uh, Pat, and uh, three times it swayed. Coming up, we'll have the men's champion, Jimmy Arias, and an interview and the presentation. But first, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. You know, I'm often asked if there's really a difference between tennis rackets. Here, let me show you. Take the Prince Pro. It's a large head, and it's aluminum. But now, there's the Wilson Sting. Same large head size, but the Sting is 100% graphite. So now you can get the power and the control of graphite, and you can get it at about the same price as aluminum. Aluminum Pro or graphite Sting? You gotta go with graphite. The Wilson Sting. Graphite makes the difference. 
Next Sunday, they'll play the most important tune-up for the U.S. Open, the men's singles final of the Canadian Open, next Sunday, live on CBS Sports. Tony Trabert is down on the court now with this year's champion, Jimmy Arias. And for the ceremonies and presentations of all the trophies, let's now go to Tony. Ladies and gentlemen, for the presentation ceremony, it is my privilege to introduce our good friend, Tony Trabert. Tony. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice hand for our finalists and our winner, Jimmy Arias. Jimmy, you were a runner-up here last year. You've made the final step, and congratulations. It was a tough match, wasn't it? It was a real tough match, and uh, I don't think I ever could have won it if it wasn't for the help of the crowd out here. You were great to me all week, and I love you. Any special preparations in this kind of weather, the, the heat and humidity? Well, I just hope not to, uh, not to cramp before the match is over. I was in Florida for the last four weeks before this summer circuit started and it's just as hot there as it is here so I think um, our audience would be interested to know that Jimmy said I'm tired of making speeches and I said don't get to the finals you don't have to make these speeches so this way at least we'll ask you some more questions how about Andres he played a great match he played really well today and I think I, I really got a little bit lucky he lost his concentration when he was leading 3-1 in the third and and then the crowd got behind me and uh, an American finally won the US clays you know <laughs> Of course, the last one was Jimmy Connors in 1979. It is good to see Americans win on clay, go over and win the French. How about that? That's right. I would now um, like to introduce the president of USTA, Mr. Hunter Delatour, who will make the presentation of the gold and silver balls to the runner-up and winner. Hunter? Thank you, Tony. Uh, before I present the balls to these two fine players and sportsmen, uh, I'd like to acknowledge on behalf of the United States Tennis Association, the great work that Stan Moles and his wonderful team of volunteers have done in putting this tournament on. I also want to thank all of you wonderful people from Indianapolis for giving this tournament the support that it deserves. This is one of a few world-class championships, and I hope that you will continue to give it the same support year after year. Andres, you played a great tournament and a great match. I'd like to... Andres says it's too late now. <laughs> Andres, it, it gives me great pleasure to present this silver tennis ball, which is traditional to the runners-up of every United States Tennis Association National Championship. We're proud of you and hope we'll see a lot more of you. Thank you. Thank you. Jimmy, you know how I feel about you over the years. We, we first played in an IC match back in Glen Cove, New York. What was it, four or five years ago when Jimmy was about like this? We knew he was a comer, and this proves he is. <laughs> Jimmy, all the best to you. I'd like to present the gold award to you, and I'm sure that you will receive and win many more. Congratulations to you. 
All the best. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's with great pleasure I introduce Mr. Stan Molesse, the tournament director, to make the presentation of the trophy to the winner. Uh, first of all, first of all, I want to thank Jimmy for playing Tuesday night when he didn't want to. And now, Jimmy, I'd like to award you the uh, golden, the silver bowl that's been in the existence for 74 years, and your name will be added in a plaque along with some other famous great tennis players. We at CBS Sports would like to again congratulate Andres for a tremendous match and a fine tournament. We wish you well. And Jimmy, congratulations on the national championship. And now we'll go back to Pat Summerall and John Newcomb. All right, thank you very much, Tony. And again, congratulations to Jimmy Arias and to Andres Gomez. More tennis is coming your way, however, as we're going to take you back to last year's U.S. Open final.